Hey viewers, today we will be doing an introduction to mechanics. We will be looking at a simple construction and try to find out how much force is applied at each point. To do this, we will assume that the construction isn't moving in any way, which means with Newton's force law, that the net forces in every direction must be zero. This uh, is called statics, by the way. It's a uh, part of mechanics, but it's called statics. In addition, the moments must be zero in every direction. First, we will take a look at the components we can use to build constructions. There are three types of supports. Roller supports, which can only apply a force perpendicular to the surface they're on and can apply no moments. Pin supports, which can apply forces but no moments. Built-in supports, which can provide forces as well as moments. Outside of these supports, there are several construction components, but we will limit ourselves to two. The beam, which can have forces and moments applied to it in all directions, and the rope, which can only have a force applied to it in the direction of the rope and only outwards. Finally, we have the outside world, which is technically not a part of the construction, but nevertheless very important. With these construction elements, we are going to build our first construction. It looks like this. It represents a diving board. Imagine someone is standing on the tip of the board, applying a force of 800 newtons. What would be the forces and moments on the two supports? The board is 4.8 meters long and the right support is at 1.20 meters from the left, making the right side 3.6 meters long. First, we are going to draw in all the possible forces. Obviously, they don't have values attached to them yet, but at least we will know what we have to work with. The left support is a pin support, which means it can provide a force in horizontal and vertical direction. The right support is a roller support, which means it can only provide a force in vertical direction, perpendicular to the surface it's on. Balancing these forces is relatively easy when we add all the forces in horizontal direction and set them equal to zero, we get F1H is zero. When we add the forces in vertical direction and set them to equal zero, we get minus F1V plus F2V minus 800 Newtons is zero. It's obvious that we chose the upward direction as positive here. If you choose positive to be the downwards direction, you will get exactly the same result. It's just that all of the arrows will reverse. So how do we continue from here? Well, as I said in the beginning, we're not just looking at forces. We're also looking at moments and these moments must equal zero too. A moment is a force times the distance to the rotation point. In this case, we can, for example, take point two to be our rotation point. That means that the moment clockwise is 800 times 3.6 and the moment counterclockwise is F1V times 1.2. To clarify, since the distance of F2V to point two is zero, the moment is also zero. The net moment needs to be zero. So 800 times 3.6 minus F1V times 1.2 is zero. From this, we see that F1V is three times 800 is 2400 Newtons. Since minus F1V plus F2V minus 800 is zero, as we saw before, we get that F2V is 800 plus 2400 is 3200 Newtons. But what if we had taken point one as a rotation point? Clockwise, we would have had 4.8 times 800. Counterclockwise, we would have had 1.2 times F2V. The sum of these two needs to be zero, which gives 4.8 times 800 minus 1.2 times F2V is zero, resulting in F2V is four times 800 is 3200 Newtons, which is the same as we saw before. With minus F1V plus F2V minus 800 is zero, this gives F1V is 3200 minus 800 is 2400 Newtons. The exact same result. In fact, it doesn't matter which point we take. We can take whatever point we want. Some points are just smarter choices than others. Anyway, I hope you learned something today. 
and I will see you next time.